Let's talk about Python loops. Python loops are pretty easy to understand and really, really powerful. In Python, we have two different types of loops that we want to use, for loops and while loops. For loops being best used when you know how many times you want the loop to run in advance, and while loops being best for scenarios where you don't know how many times you want the loop to run, you just know that it needs to loop until some condition is met. Let's begin with for loops. The for loop system in Python is built off of this basic framework for some variable in some iterable. Not interable, iterable. With a colon and then all of the looped content being indented one line underneath. So the big question to unravel here is what is an iterable? Well, if you've heard of iterating over something, it means to work through it kind of one step at a time in a certain order. So we're examining all of the variables in something that can be moved through kind of systematically. And something that could be moved through systematically might be a list of objects. For example, well, I'll do this down here. Uh, we'll learn more about some of our data structures in a future section. But right now, I could just simply make a, uh, a menu of food. And maybe in it, I have a burger, and I have fries, and I have a pop as just a few things that are inside of this menu that I'm looking at. And so what I could do to loop through the contents of the menu, and this could be as long as I want it to be, just short to save some time here, is to say for food in menu. And what this is saying is that I'm looking at each food entry inside of the menu. But it's important to remember that Python doesn't really know the meaning of the words inside of this. So food is just to help me, as the coder, understand the content. I could make this for x, y, z, and menu, and Python wouldn't care. This is just a placeholder for the variable name. But each of the variables it assigns will be one of the elements of this iterable structure. So I'm just going to call this food. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the food out. Now if I run my program. I see pop, burger, and fries appearing at the bottom. And just to make sure this is really clear, maybe the last thing I'll have is, I don't know, maybe some pancakes. Did I spell this wrong? C-A-K, pancakes, backwards. And there's pancakes popping out. So one of the beautiful things about Python for loops is that we actually don't have to tell it how many entries are in the thing that we're looping over, because it'll automatically figure out that if we just say in the menu that we want everything in the menu. However, there are ways we could deal with later only having a subset of things. But before we talk about that, I want to look at just looping a certain number of times through some set of, uh, basically running something a certain number of times. Let me show you here. For num in, and we use a method call called range. And inside of range, I'm able to put some numbers to tell my loop how many times I want it to run. For example, if I put in range 10, this is going to count from 0 to 10, not including 10. So it's going to run 10 times. Let's just see exactly how this looks by printing out this number. So num is the variable holding each of the entries in this 10 element iterable thing. And each of those entries is listed here, 0 through 9. So it starts at 0 and ends at 9 when I put in range 10. I could also include this kind of syntax here, I'm going to count from 3 till 10. If I print this out, it's 3 to 9, not including that top number. So the first value is inclusive. The last value is exclusive. I can also kind of do something in reverse. But the third value in range being how many steps that I'm counting. So if I go from 10 to 3 at a minus 1 step, then I'm counting down from 10 till 4, because the last value is exclusive. Remember that. I can also, if I wanted to, maybe go from 10 to 0, I'm going to count down by 2s instead of by 1s. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So I can make this gap as much as I want. And what happens if I made it 11 and I tried to run this? Well, it prints the first value and nothing else, because it jumps past the point where I'm able to print things. So being outside of the range just kind of makes us skip over any really meaningful data in this loop. So this range function is really cool, because we're able to just do a certain number of processes that we want to on a certain set of data. Let's see an example of this. What if I did 99 to 0 going at a step of minus 1? And what I did here is I want to perform this 99 bottles of beer 
on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Take one down and pass it around. Maybe you know the song. And then it's supposed to go to 98 bottles of beer on the wall. And the way that I've written it right now, it's going to print out this message, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 times, which is not exactly what I want. What I want to do is some uh, concatenation on this so that instead of saying 99 bottles of beer, I say the number that I'm at. But remember that we actually need, if I press F10, we'll see the error popping up, an unsupported type, let's just miss this email here, int and string don't like to be mixed. So I need to actually take this num and convert it to a string here so that when I print it out, I see the 99 bottles of beer being printed out. Now I, I see that I have the one in the middle here that's still 99, so I'm going to do some more concatenation. I'm going to say again the string of the num repeated in here, and then we're going to add this to the statement. As I go through, I actually sing the whole song, and actually I want a space there, and there we go. We now have a nice little algorithm using a loop that actually performs the full 99 bottles of beer in the wall song wonderfully just using this loop by using the special range function. So you've seen how we can use a for loop to go through an actual list of things. I'll show you more about this when we get to talking about data structures. And we can also just make a certain behavior inside happen as many times as we want with this range function. Awesome. What about a while loop that can happen as many times as it needs to until something is finished? Well, in Python, I simply say while and then some condition. Well, what's this condition going to be? It doesn't even have to be in brackets. I could say, for example, while 1 is less than 2 if I wanted to. I'm going to print hello. And just to clean this up, I'm going to erase this up here for now. And right now in my program, I have what we call an infinite loop. 1 is always less than 2. So I'm kind of stuck printing this hello message forever. So how could I get around doing this? Well, I need to be a bit more clever about what I put in as a parameter here, or I could do something else. Maybe I want to state uh, the limit of this loop is 100, and inside of the loop, I'm going to go limit minus equals 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from it, and I have an actual way of breaking out of my loop early. I can say if limit equals 0, break. Oh, I forgot my colon. And what break does is it just breaks the loop and kicks us outside. And I'm just going to print here, loop finished, to see that we're done. So let's kind of think through the logic of this loop. I'm saying while 1 is less than 2, which is always the case, so this could loop forever unless I break out somehow. I'm keeping track of some limit of how many times I want this to run and minusing one each time this loop runs and I'm printing hello. And actually, just to be really clear, I'm going to say this will run this many more times. Colon, and I'm going to add to this the string form of the limit so we can see how many more times it's going to run. Let's run this here. And it's going to run 99 more times all the way down to one more time and zero more times and then loop finished because we hit this condition of the variable that's kind of keeping track of how the loop's doing to break out the limiting feature of this. So that's one way we can deal with loops. But maybe some other way, and this is a kind of a very common usage for a loop, a while loop in particular, would be to have kind of a bit of a menu system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some player input to choose an option from a menu. So I'm going to first define a boolean that I have good input being received. And I'm going to assume that I don't get good input at first. So I'm going to say while my input is not good. And in Python, the not statement, we usually see this exclamation in other coding languages. In Python, we just say not. And so while I don't have good input, I want this loop to continue. So what is it I'm going to be asking for? Well, I want the uh, user input to be whatever is input by the user. And in here, I want to let them know what it is that I want. But because I'm asking for this input all in the kind of the uh, parameters that are being sent out, the message being sent out to the user here, I want my menu to look nice. Let, let me show you what I'm, what I'm thinking about in advance here. Let's say the first input is start game, for example. And then I have a second input value for load game and a third one for quit game. 
So, oh, I make input capitalized. Let's just run input with the lowercase actual method call. So input, if I run this really quick, I see that it's all on the same line of code. What if I want this to be spread out a little bit more obviously, kind of like it might be a more oriented a little bit better. Well, this is a sneak preview of our string lesson, but we can use something called an escape character. And if I do this backslash n before each of these two and three, this is not recognized as part of the string. It's a special uh, little statement that adds some organizational information, which is actually a new line being written. So in one string, I can actually split them up into different lines by putting in that new line. So look at that. It looks quite nice. And now I'm able to actually input maybe one, two, or three to start the game. And it keeps on looping back because, well, I got the input, but I don't do anything with it. So I need to create some logic to be able to deal with this. So inside of the loop, by tapping over, I'm going to make some if statements. I'm going to say if the user input equals one, go back here, and I'm going to maybe just simply say, uh, game started. And if the user input equals 2, I'm going to print and say game loaded. And if my user input equals 3, oh, I don't like how this looks here. Let's fix this up. I'm going to print and say game quit. And I want to make these elifs actually so that they're all linked together. And I'm going to make an else statement at the end that says, well, if 1, 2, or 3 weren't entered, that means the user didn't choose one of the options that I've coded my game to expect, which is a problem because I need them to choose something. Otherwise, I don't know what to do with their input. So in this else statement, I'm actually going to say, bad input, please try again and listen this time. Something like that. Okay. So now what happens when I run this? Well, I can choose one and it says bad input. Please try again and listen this time. So in Python, because of our, our automatic data typing, again, we have to be careful because right now this is being accepted as a string and it's being processed as an int. So I need to remember to cast the result of this input call into a string, oh, sorry, into an int in this case, so that when I run it and I press start game, it says game started and actually compares the data properly. Okay, good. So game started, game loaded, game quit. Wonderful. But what if I press an in incorrect value? Bad input, please try again and listen this time. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, an incorrect input will actually tell the player, please try again and listen. But the loop is forcing us to go back through the menu, but one thing that I want to enable here is that if I have a good input that's acceptable, I want to actually get out of this loop, maybe trigger a method or get out of it. So there's two ways I could do this. I could say my good input equals true. Making this true will now mean that the loop will terminate. Let's see back here. If I press one, game started, the loop terminates. Perfect. Or in this case, I could just put a break statement. I've been writing too much Java lately. I keep on putting in semicolons. Game loaded, great. And the third case, well, I'm just gonna go back to my good input strategy and let that be true as well. So now if I put in any other number, I'm forced to keep on going through this menu until I put in a number that it likes and then the loop is terminated. So there we go. We have a nice strategy of using a while loop. The user can screw it up as many times as they want. They can sit there and mash the wrong key over and over and over again. And my loop forces them to keep on going until I get something that I know how to deal with. And then and only then do I free them from the tyrannical grasp of this loop by allowing it to break or by changing the state of the while loop so that it actually allows itself to end. There you go. There's a couple types of loops in Python.